So in this video, I'm going to show you five Notion tips and workflows that have made my Notion experience much better. And we can do this because of all of the new stuff that Notion has added. So I've made this video like a step-by-step -step guide so you can follow along with each example. Number one, auto dates. So Notion recently released a feature called Recurring Tasks and it's gotten a lot of attention from people in the community. But there is a big gap in its native implementation. If you use the at the rate now or the at the rate today property with a repeat trigger, it will populate a text property. Alternately, you can have it populate with the created time property, which will also timestamp it along with the date. But that's not what I wanted. I wanted something that would show up in the date property, especially for my calendar. That's also connected with the Google Calendar bidirectionally with Notion using an integrator called Notion Automations. So I couldn't do this until I found this hack. So the way this works is that you set up a date property like you usually would do. And you do that inside of the template property inside of Notion. And then what you do is change the date property into a text property. Now you add the at the rate now or the at the rate today, depending on whether you want to see this as a date or something with the date and time. And you choose to populate the date when duplicate. Now that everything is done, you convert the date field back from text to date. You'll notice that it went blank, but it will do its function. But now you still need to set up the repeat to the desired frequency with your desired start time. Just to show you the test results, I set the time to the current time plus a few minutes. You still need to check whether it's doing its function. So I just set it up as a default property and I clicked on the plus new button at the bottom. Ah, so now we're all set and ready. At the trigger time, the database is now auto-populated into the date field. Now this event will auto-populate along with all your other calendar entries, which is especially useful if you're doing something like habit tracking inside of Notion. Subtotals. So another outstanding feature that Notion released in December of 2022 has to do with sub-items. To demonstrate this feature, let's create a table with Jan, Feb and March as the months in the default name property. Let's add in a property called amount. We'll have the property type as number. Now let's create sub-items and you can choose to leave the property names as default or change them. So I'm going to leave them as default. So as you can see, it's created two relation columns, one for the parent and one for the sub item. Let's go back to January and I'll create two expense heads. Let's call one as petrol and the other one as groceries. To make sure that the totals add up, I'm going to add in a roll up with a relation to the sub item field. So I can reference this back to petrol and groceries, which are sub items. I want to remap the property field to amount and calculate the sum. I can name the roll-up property to a name of my choosing. So all of this will be a one-time activity. Now you're all set. So now when I add an expense inside of each of the months, they'll be automatically totaled up in the roll-up total. And that way it gives me month totals automatically. So this is a handy little feature if you're doing something with your finance tracker or a budgeting exercise. Number three, simpler sentences. So if you write frequently, whether it's for an email, a blog, a newsletter, or a book, you tend to agree that the time taken to write things out depends on how easily you're able to get the right words rather than your typing speed. If you write often, like emails, blogs, newsletters or books, it takes more time to get the right words than it does to type fast. One Notion AI feature that I use constantly every day is simpler language. When I published my book, I didn't have access to a tool like this, which would have saved me weeks and months to get the right words. The way it works is you just highlight the sentence and ask Notion AI to take over. Just click on AI Assist, then use the simpler language. In my case, I just highlight and click a button on my Stream Deck. If you don't like the rewording, simply ask it to try again. If you want to compare a few options or mix and match them, ask it to insert the option right below the current script. Number four, Notion formula. So Notion AI isn't really great to write out a Notion formula yet, but it's great to explain a formula. Let's take an example. I like keeping a tab on some of my friends, my family and their birthdays, and I wish them or send them a gift right in time for their birthday. So I created a database and I've used some sample names like Alan, Cindy and Randy and their birthdays as examples. So I have columns like birthdays and a today column, which has the now function embedded as a formula. So I used a simple date calculation formula, which calculates the number of days between the birthday and today. Now, if I wanted to understand the formula, 
for the date between that I used. All I need to do is to invoke Notion AI and I ask Notion AI to explain the Notion formula and I add in the formula at the end. It could be any other formula that you choose. If you build your second brain with Formulate, you can keep an entire repository of formulae that you create and get Notion to help you explain so that you can recollect them later with a quick description. Scripting with Notion. So writing a script can be really useful for a lot of different situations, like giving a presentation, talking to customers, making a speech, or creating a YouTube video. So it helps you stay on track, and it covers all the necessary points with a clear structure, being concise and visible, as well as prepared and very well thought out. There is another aspect to scripting, which is enabling human emotion and a hand gesture while you talk. This is where I use Notion databases and this formula as a hack to insert emotion and hand gestures into the script. Take a look. So let's take this sentence as an example, which has all the letters of the alphabet. You must have heard this before. The emotion examples are in the legends column. And now let's say I want to insert this before the word fox. So I'll just add in a marker, which is number one. And we'll put this right into square brackets to indicate that. Now let's look at some magic. So in the column that I've called composite, I'll add in a formula which uses the replace command in Notion. In the property script shot, I want to replace the marker one with this legend. Note here that I've used the double forward slash as part of a regex command in the formula. Now that's to ensure that only an exact match is taken out and replaced. So you'll notice that the legend has got inserted in the composite, but I want the emotion to stand out similarly within square brackets. So I modify the formula with a concat embedded in the third part to add in with square brackets. Now let's add in the marker at the beginning of the sentence. You'll notice that the smile has shifted from before the fox to the beginning. And you'll notice that if you move the marker to the end of the sentence, it sticks with the fox. If I add numbers inside, it just ignores them since it's not an exact match. So you may be wondering, how do I get all the markers to be replaced by the legend? So if you want that to happen, you simply change the formula from replace to replace all. If I want to change the expression, I just change the legend. So if you want to see more cool tricks and idea not seen anywhere else, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get updates when new videos are added. For now, adios amigos.